It's an understatement to say that Sean Spicer had a rocky relationship with the media while working as President Trump's press secretary. That's, I appreciate your agenda here, but the reality is, oh no, no, hold on. No, at some point, report the facts. Appreciate Sean, it. Sean, since leaving his job in July, Spicer has appeared on the Emmys and a few late-night TV shows, but otherwise has kept a fairly low profile until today. He and I sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview to discuss the president, the media, and his deep Catholic faith. Sean Spicer, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. What's it like on the outside after this tumultuous term as press secretary? Uh, it's a lot less stressful. Uh, it's still busy, it's a lot of travel, but the stress level has gone down by a factor. And I bet for your family, too. Uh, it's been great to be able to, to spend time with them. I got to go to the All Saints Parade the other day at my kid's school, and so there's a lot of time with my family that I'm able to claim back. Let's talk about the media and your time there. Yeah. Do you think that the media have lost their way? Some, absolutely. Uh, there's no question. Uh, that some reporters and some outlets have really kind of crossed the line in terms of what they'll do, what, what's, what narratives they'll push, what stories they edit, which, uh, you know, issues they don't cover. Uh, there's, quite, there's no question when you see a lot of these stories that come out and the attempt to, to push uh, issues and narratives into the mainstream uh, while at the same time covering up other stories, uh, you know, it's, it's concerning. I think a lot of the folks in the mainstream media need to take a look at what's happening and understand that uh, people now have more ways than ever to get their news, whether it's through a station like EWTN or through a blog or people on Twitter that they follow or Facebook that are uh, aggregators. I think there's a way that the American people can find out the facts and, and issues that they care about uh, and are largely turning away from a lot of the mainstream folks because they, they don't trust them anymore. And I think the polls reflect that. So uh, it's, it's to their own detriment. It's not a question of who wins and loses. I think democracy loses when we don't have a vibrant and robust uh, media that we can trust. Were some, though, of the stories from the mainstream media legitimate? There's no question that when you look at a lot of the, some of the stories, whether it's CNN or Politico, the New York Times, the Washington Post, that there are times when they overlook key stories, key facts, uh, to perpetuate a narrative and a storyline that fits their being. There's no question about it. Uh, and you're seeing that partly on the president's visit right now, what they focus on, uh, what they don't focus on. They, are, they put down religious issues. Uh, I think when it comes to how they cover people who believe in areas, in issues because of faith, they look at that as a negative, and they don't believe that good people can believe in, in areas of faith and be guided by that. And I think that that shows their bias. Did you ever tell the president never to talk to a, a reporter, like, this isn't going to serve you, they have their own agenda, um, maybe it's better, not right now, not to engage. Absolutely. I mean, from the standpoint of, I, I provided him counsel on a daily basis, as well as the rest of the communications and press team, that would suggest, you know, hey, this is a good outlet, this is a good reporter, uh, or this one is really driving a particular narrative. Uh, our job is to consistently provide him with the best advice possible, whether it's issues or interviews or particular reporters that we thought would be helpful in getting a story out or um, or making sure that it, something was covered. But did he listen to you? Oh, yeah, sure, all the time. Um, sometimes he took the advice, sometimes it was a combination of it, and sometimes he said, I appreciate it, but here's what I want to do. And that's frankly not just what he does, but every principal that I've worked for. I mean, that's your job is to give them uh, the best advice and counsel that you can and let them make the ultimate decision. Let's talk about the Pope. On Trump's. He's a good man. He is a good <laughs> man. And you met him. I did. Finally. But there was a kerfuffle that you were on the trip uh, when Donald Trump and Melania met the Pope, but you weren't able to meet him. The media blew it up into the story of the meeting. Uh, were you disappointed? Well, look, I, again, I'm not going to go into details, but I think that the, what, what got reported at the time was not accurate. Um, and, it, and through a variety of, of what I believe, frankly, is divine intervention. I think that all things happen for a reason. Um, I was able to take my, my mom, my kids, and my wife to go see the Holy Father, uh, you know, a month later. Uh, that was a great honor. You know, I look at it and say, if, if that's what came of it, of that instance, uh, that I got to share uh, that meeting with more of my family, uh, then that, that was worth every, every part of it. Give me your takeaway of the Pope. Uh, I think that uh, he has done a tremendous amount for our faith. 
um, and for frankly the Catholic Church. Uh, he is so welcoming, he brings people in, obviously on some policy issues, but when it comes to um, understanding the Word of God and what we are supposed to be as individuals and what he asks of us, I think he leads by example, um, and I think uh, he has been uh, a very positive force on the church, and I think um, that I hope going forward more uh, future popes and future you know, priests and brothers and sisters look at him and, and the approach that he's taken to uh, to living his faith um, and being kind to others and understanding what Christ has asked of us. Was there a moment when your family met with him that really touched you? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't imagine what it's like to be in his presence and, uh, and not feel uh, overwhelmed. And so sitting there and, um, and praying with him and, and um, hearing him proclaim the word of God is sort of one of those moments in life that you'll never forget. It's just one of those days that you go, okay, nothing's going to measure up. Sean Spicer, former White House Press Secretary, thank you. Thank you. Sean tells me now his life is giving speeches, going to events and consulting, and a book is in the works. We will have more of my conversation with him, including what he thinks about Saturday Night Live's impersonations, tomorrow on EWTN News Nightly.